What is going on everybody and welcome to my tutorial video for January 2018. If you don't already know, my name is Johnny and I do vlogs about independent game development. However, in 2018 I've decided to commit myself to making at least one tutorial per month. So here is the first of these tutorials. Anyways, in today's video we're going to be talking about something that may seem a little confusing at first, but trust me, it's really easy and that is interfaces. And I know you may be thinking, interfaces, oh, this is just something that the player interacts with in, in your game. No, it's actually a little bit different than that. We're talking about uh, the programming concept of interfaces. And essentially, it's a way where you can get different classes that aren't related at all to share some sort of behavior. Uh, anyways, I'm going to give you a brief little overview of what we're going to be talking about on the whiteboard today. And then we're going to jump right into the code using C Sharp and Unity. Alright, so over here on the whiteboard you can see that we have a number of different classes listed here. Now normally when you want to share behavior between multiple classes, you'd use something like inheritance. So you'd make an enemy based class and then you can have as many um, child classes that inherit from that base enemy class. So for example we have an enemy 1 and an enemy 2 class and that'll inherit a bunch of the variables and functions from this base enemy class here. Now what if we want to make an enemy spawner class or a player class and they all share some sort of behavior? Well that's where interfaces come into play. So using interfaces we can actually share behavior between multiple classes without them actually having to be inheriting from each other. So basically in today's example I'm going to be showing you how to make a damageable interface and this will make it super easy for all these different types of classes to be able to take damage in my game. So without further ado, let's jump on into the code. Okay, so here we are. We have a blank C Sharp file open and this is where we're actually going to define what our interface is. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to need to do is just inherit from one of the Unity Engine libraries. So all we we'll do is using Unity Engine, just like that. And for the interface itself, we're going to want to make it a public interface. And the reason we do this is so all scripts throughout our project can access it. And we're going to call it iDamageable. So the typical naming conventions for interfaces start with a capital I, and then we have a verb, in this case it's damage, and then it ends in able. So for example, you wanna make something explodable, you would do capital I, capital E, and then explodable. But really, this is just a name, and it can be anything that you want. And then after this, we're gonna use the open and close angle brackets and use a generic type T. And I'll show you what that's for in just a second here. After that, we'll do our open and close curly braces. And in here, we'll just have a void function called damage. And for the parameters, we'll have our generic type T for damage mount. And we'll also take in a game object called attacker go just so we have a reference to who actually attacked the object and that's really all the interface script is this basically just defines what we're going to be defining later um, this is very similar to a header file if you're familiar with um, c++.h files so we're not defining any behavior or anything in here we're just saying this is the interface and this is the function that is you know part of that interface and so real quickly I'll explain this type T and what that's for um, essentially this is so you can use different variable types for damage amount so if on one enemy you wanted your damage to be in hit points you'd use maybe an integer or if you wanted a more accurate representation of damage amount, you could use it for a float. And so you could basically use this interface to account for both of those situations using this generic type T modifier there. But if you say only wanted to use integers, you can just take out that T there, and then we'll make this an int. But for my case, I'm using the type T, so we'll put that back in. Anyways, we'll just go ahead and save this script. I, as you can see, I call it idamageable.cs. Again, you can call it anything that you want. And we just save that to my scripts folder in my Unity project. 
Okay, now I've opened my ship controller script, and this is the script that I have attached to the player controller, and I'm basically going to show you how we actually define the damage function. So the first thing that we're going to do at the very top where it says public class ship controller, which inherits from mono behavior, we're going to put a comma after that, and then put in our I damageable interface. And we're going to be sure to put in the angle brackets and use the variable type integer because that is what we're going to be using in this case. So you'll notice that right away we have this red squiggly line under here and that's basically my interface saying that there's an error. And if you hover over it, I don't know how much you'll be able to see it, but it says ship controller does not implement interface member idamageable integer dot damage, which takes in an integer and a game object. Now what that basically means is if you have this I damageable interface on here, you need to define everything that it is in this I damageable interface. So right now we only have this damage function. So basically all that means is this ship controller script needs to have that damage function in it. So we'll scroll down to a nice little place here and we'll go ahead and create a public void damage function. And this takes in an integer for damage amount and a game object for attacker game object. And so this, as you see right under here, I already have a decrease player health, which actually handles all the decreasing of player health. But in here, that's where we're going to call this function decrease player health by damage amount and then I just have a little um, game over message that says watch out for enemies but you can really do whatever you want in here this is just what I have but you'd probably want to do something along the lines of player health minus equals minus equals damage amount. And if you want to do something with the attacker game object, you could do something like destroy attacker go. All right, so hopefully everything up to this point seems pretty straightforward. We basically just defined an interface and then defined the behavior that we want on that interface for our individual um, player controller here. Now where interfaces get really cool is where we can use them to call the interface function. Okay, so here we have my shot controller script, and this is basically just going to attach to the shots that the player fires. And the behavior that we want to happen is when the shot collides with something, if it is damageable, we want to damage it. So we'll start by having a void on collision enter script, which of course takes in a collision and we'll just call this col call. And in here we want to check if the other object is damageable. So for that we'll do if call dot game object dot get component and this is where we put the i damageable and we want to make sure that it's using a integer for that and then not equal to null. So just make sure we're doing get component. We'll have an open angle bracket here, I damageable, another open angle bracket, integer, close angle bracket, close angle bracket, and then open and close parentheses for the get component function. And then inside this if statement, all we'll want to do here is we'll say call dot game object, dot get component again open angle bracket i damageable open angle bracket integer again close angle bracket close angle bracket open and close parentheses dot damage and here we'll just damage it by one hit point and of course we need to put a reference for who the attacker is so in this case it's the player and then so I have it set up in my game for ship controller dot instance dot 
game object. And so basically that's all the scripting is. Basically we just wanna to check to see if it is damageable and if it is, we can just call that damage function. Um, this is really useful because we don't need to check if it's an enemy, we don't need to check if it's a player, we don't need to check if it's an enemy spawner, you know, we don't need to handle a bunch of different cases because we know that if something can be damaged, it's going to have that I damageable script attached to it. So, I mean, this just keeps everything like super clean and simple. You'll see that we really only wrote a few lines of code and it just makes everything across the board be able to function with the exact same behavior, which is really nice. So anyways, I'll just give a brief little demo of how this actually works in my game. So we'll hit the play button in the Unity editor here. So of course, here's the player ship and it can shoot shots just like that. And again, these shots have that shot controller script attached to them. So when they hit something, they will see if something is damageable. And if it is, it will damage it. So over here, you can see we have a few enemies and an enemy spawner, which all inherit from that I damageable script. So once we start shooting at them, you can see that we're damaging them. And of course, we have an I damageable script attached to us. So when an enemy hits us, boom, you'll see that the lives counter will go down in the upper right hand corner. I'll get one more enemy to chase after me just to demonstrate this behavior. So anyways, that's just about going to do it for this tutorial. I really hope you learned something and I really hope that you see how useful interfaces can be in games. Um, they make everything just a lot more cleaner. And it's really nice because you can have that shared behavior between a bunch of different game objects without them having to like inherit from each other and then things start getting complicated and you get all kinds of weird behavior. So it's just a really nice, clean, robust way to go about doing things. And I really hope that you will all be using interfaces in your next projects. So anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It's going to help me out a lot. Um, feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section below on interfaces or any tutorials that you may want to see in the future. Also, feel free to check out my channel, check out my other vlogs, and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.